so all the inside of the trunk is done. But I'm trying to get the inner inner fender wells welded up. Um, everything's seam sealed in here. <clears throat> Got to get all this sanded in here by hand. And then uh, the inner fender well. I'll show you what I got going on. So this is the piece I'm building now. It goes from here and it'll weld. I'm gonna make a pattern that goes from here down to this fender. And then pull this in a little bit and then weld that up so that it, you know, it's uh, solid, all one piece. So the fender's not, or the quarter panel's not wiggling around. And then I gotta uh, seam seal all this crap and put the coating on it like this. Yuck. All this was rotted out, had to make all that stuff by hand. Got it all done, the outer piece. Lower quarters are put on. These pieces are all finished up, just need to be welded solid. Doing the inner fender wells right now. Trying to get all that crap done so I can get this bitch in primer and get it gone. Oh, what a pain in the ass. So this is the Harbor Freight throatless shear. Like I said, I got it for like 149 bucks. Delivered, free shipping and all that. Model number is 38413. Central Forge brand, throatless shear. And this, this just has some instructions on uh, how to adjust the jaws and you know, all that good stuff. Um, when I did get it though, you have to, there's Cosmoline, which is like a military grade oil on the jaws. You have to take some brake clean or acetone or whatever, and clean those off and then right here, clean those off. And then these bolts were loose in the box. So I tighten those up. This one was loose, tighten that up. Um, and then the, little screws here tighten those i just kind of went through everything because usually a lot of the harbor freight tools when they show up they're just kind of thrown in the box and then you have to put the handle on which is uh just a 12 millimeter uh, wrench tighten that up and it comes with this handle but i was really surprised i have never had one of these and well, i shouldn't say i never had one a long time ago i had one but you know since i moved to minnesota i haven't got one but uh, the one that I had was a little bit different than this. This one works amazing. And the reason I wanted the throatless shear is because you can cut circles and stuff with it. It's not just a straight cut, like the style that Eastwood has, you know, with the long one. Their blades are about this long, but you can only cut straight with it. This one, you can cut circles and angles and all kinds of different stuff. <clears throat> and so right now, I just need a quick cut on this. So that's what I'm cutting here. Instead of trying to do that with, uh, you know, hand shears or the metal uh, electric shear, and I'll put the instructions in a file, you know, where I have my uh, other files or whatever in a toolbox. That way I know where they're at. That way if, if, you know, something breaks, you can order parts or whatever for it. But I'll go ahead and start using this thing. So I got some gloves. I'm wearing my mechanics gloves just so I don't cut my hand. And uh, for the most part, you know, wear safety glasses. Don't be a dumbass because some of the stuff kind of when you're cutting it, it slings up, comes off of it, like little pieces, little shards of metal come out of there, so. One of the other things I like, is when you're cutting with these, the aviation snips, if you have smaller pieces like this, that are like eighth inch or something, you can hardly trim those with these cutters because what happens is it folds it over and this is pretty thick this is a uh, I believe this is 18 gauge or 16 gauge sheet metal it's really thick and uh, this is for that inner fender well and this thing cuts it like butter totally worth the money though And you can see how small pieces you can cut off all the way down to there, you know, like hair thin. And if, like I said, if you were doing that with this, there's no way that that would happen. That would just fold that, that edge would fold right over in the jaws of the, of the aviation snips. And look how nice of a cut that is. Nice and smooth, it's not sharp, there's no edges. Really nice. 
pretty stoked about that. Got a better angle. And like I said, I will do a review on this after a while to see if uh, you know if, if it's something I like. But so far, just you know, when you have nice tools, there's just certain tools that you know that you can use that are just like awesome. And I can tell you right now that this is very sweet tool. You know, if you have a fabrication shop or even a, a home shop where you do rust repair and <clears throat> some metal fab and stuff I mean, this would really uh, help out look how nice of a cut but yeah totally worth it I can see this is going to save a lot of time so I'll probably film some more in a bit I'm going to keep working on this uh, Plymouth trying to get this damn thing done um, I want to get that inner fender well welded in and uh, also I have, uh, you know, the body work to do to it, which I was hoping to have that stuff started today, but it just doesn't look like it. There's so much welding and stuff to be on, done on here. And I forgot about the inside fender wells. So until this morning, I was up under, underneath there inspecting everything. And, and uh, I realized that it still needs to be, uh, holy crap, my forehead's dirty as hell. <clears throat> it still needs to be, uh, fabbed and welded and put together all those pieces up underneath there so i'll try to get that stuff done get the gas door on it and then this thing can go i'll put the wheels back on it it can go back over to the body shop and get uh you know mudded and primed and puttied and all that crap get it block sanded so I'll, I'll try to give you an update later thanks for watching all right so it's the next day and what i'm doing is i'm cutting these uh <clears throat> these inner structures Sorry if I'm talking funny and stuff, man. I'm having a real hard time with my my uh, head this morning, giving me problems. Um, I didn't want to say nothing about it, but like Heidi says, might as well talk about it, you know. But uh, I forgot what I was saying. Anyways, whatever. Um, I'm doing these inner structures right here, or attempting to, and then I'll, I'll put you up inside the fender wheel, and I'm welding this panel here because from here to here I had to cut down and I had to build this piece and then this will be all seam sealed and then you can see where I cut the old fender well off because it had like a lip that wrap, wrapped around and then uh, it goes down here so I'm building panels that patch into here so it holds this sorry about that so it holds that piece in there and then I'm also welding right there on this piece, I'm trying to get this stuff all welded in so it makes this nice and strong and sturdy. But the biggest thing is I I had to prep it. Uh, I had to prep it with uh, freaking die grinder. And then uh, after I prepped it with the die grinder, it was a big old mess. And then I wiped it down real good so that I can you know weld these pieces on there. And then the piece that I'm doing right now is this guy, but I got to shape it because it's, uh, you can't really tell in the camera, but this is, you know, it comes back down like this and then also goes like that. So I'm shaping this piece here and then I'll get this, uh, welded on and then seam sealed. Ha! There you go. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm trying to, just trying to make it through the day. But uh, I got that piece to do. And then the other side I gotta do, and it's not so bad because I already started on some of that. And then I wanna try to get the uh, welds all grind, ground down. And I'm using that, I'll flip the camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So John sent me this uh, Blue Point sander and I've been using the piss out of this thing. It's amazing. And I love because it, it almost metal finishes it for you, you know, and you got to be careful not to overheat the panel when you're doing it. But as I'm doing this, you can see that it's, you know, 
it's almost metal finishing it because I, I leave a gap in there so you can weld. So then it has panel, uh, panel, weld, get, uh, no, panel, gap, panel, and then there's a weld in the middle now. And then, uh, you know, it's nice and smooth. So by the time I'm done, I mean, this will just take a little tiny bit of filler to smooth, you know, the to hide the imperfections of the welds when this quarter panel is all finished or this lower quarter panel is finished. Um, I got a little bit of filler I got to put in there. This right here, I didn't weld it because it has to be pushed out a little bit before I weld it. And I think that's about it. But it's kind of exciting because as soon as this is done, this goes over to the body shop to get primer. And then as soon as this thing gets primer, it's gone. Thank God. So I'm building a project right now. And, uh, you know, not everybody can walk out in their backyard and dig through a junkyard. So I found this, uh, Aaron brought this to me and I'm trying to make something. And I found uh, these axle deals. This one's all greasy and nasty. I was digging around on the pile right here and I found another one. It's a Model T uh, axle, I believe. And I'll pop this brass thing off, put it in the scrap metal pile or in the brass pile or whatever. Holy crap, I should wear my gloves. It's cold and piss out here. <clears throat> I think that's gonna work it's solid uh, steel but like I said there's not a lot of people that have a junkyard in their backyard to go digging through you know so we got all kinds of cars and so anyways uh, like I was saying Aaron gave me this a while back and I've been wanting to build a hammer because I like the shape of this and uh, this is solid uh, steel it's an old axle that was out in the junkyard. And uh, I'll go ahead and, you know, match up this size here because it drops down here. So I'll come back in here and cut this here and, you know, make a handle maybe back over here. See how long I need it or whatever. I just don't know if it's gonna affect being solid like that, if it's gonna be too heavy to swing. But I'm using my shrinking stump and the shape you know instead of getting all these dings like this from the hammer i need this shape right here but this hammer you know being that the head is so small on it this was an old ball peen that i uh modded or whatever but what i'm wanting to do is i want to use my beater bag or the shrinking stump and i want to use this old uh argon tank cap and I need that shape right there. And then, you know, it, it, it'll not only be a hammer when I'm done, but you'll be able to, you know, mount it in the vise and use this shape also to form metal, shape it over the top of, you know? So let's see what happens. Well, I was gonna run out to the other shop and use the lathe and turn this down, but then I started thinking about it. This is pretty thin. So I just grabbed the die grinder and uh, you know, shoot some of that out of there. Fits nice. So I'll get this uh, welded up. And the reason I left a short hammer on there or handle on there is because it's uh, so heavy. You know, this is solid stock right here, axle stock. So I'll get it welded up. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up now. I got everything all set up, ready to weld. I'm gonna just weld it right here, you know, all the way around, and then right here all the way around, and that'll give it, you know, that'll be nice and strong. Yeah, that'll feel good. I mean, a little, little heavy, you know, but 
I'll find some more of these and you know do one with a hollow handle too. That way when I want to you know shape quick or just bump it, you know, this one will be a heavy one for shaping real fast and you know the hollow handle wanna be one a hammer for uh, doing the light shaping, so That's one of the things I was telling Heidi about too is the older steel, this older stuff, it like you can tell it's a lot better steel. Look how nice that welds. It's strong as hell too. And when uh, I was cutting this, you can see the stars, the sparks look like stars, so it's high carbon, you know, because it was an actual material, so it's definitely hardened. <clears throat> so I got some earplugs in, this will be kind of loud. But uh, now I got a shaping hammer that I can use to get that that soft radius instead of having these hammer marks in there like that. Yeah, and you can already tell. It's, look how nice that's going to radius that right there. So, I mean, I don't even need to do much more. And that's without putting that on the English wheel or anything. So that'll be nice. And you know, it's, it's got a shape here and a shape here. So that's what, that's gonna work out good. And then this piece goes up in that fender well like this. I'll have to flatten it out just a little bit. I got it over, you know, bent over a little bit. And then when I get it up in there, I'll have to weld this up in there. You know, I have to hammer this up in there and then shape it or uh, weld it. <clears throat> But anyways, I want to cut this video short. Um, that's uh, another video to show you that you know you don't you don't need thousands and thousand dollars worth of tools. Um, you can take the stuff, the junk that you have laying around your shop, and build something cool out of it. It's you know something that you'll use over and over and over. You know you don't have to go and buy a, a freaking you know one of those hundred and fifty dollar uh, poly hammers to do something like this because they have shaping hammers that are really expensive. I was actually just looking at some of them, but. Uh, Aaron brought me that a while back. I wanted to do it and I figured it'd be a good project. You know, it's, it's something that I needed today, so I'm gonna use it. And uh, since I had the stuff here, I might as well make it, you know, and, and make it work. So I'm gonna get back after it and get this thing finished. Appreciate you guys watching, later. Well, it's getting closer. I got the piece that was uh, right here on the inside. I got that all shaped and it's on the inside here. And then all the pieces on the inside here. And then I got the other side completely finished. And, uh, I got the pieces down on the bottom, welded all the way back. Got a little bit of fabrication to do right here on the very end. I'm waiting on the answer for that. And as soon as that gets done, I can uh, grind all the welds and get this thing over to the body shop. So kicked ass today. Um, even though, like I was telling you guys, you know, I was having a hard time with my head this morning and then it kind of kicked my ass, but uh, I made it through it and I was able to, you know, just get a day out of it, you know, instead of just whining and crying and sitting at home or whatever. So um, that's what you gotta do, man. Sometimes you just gotta power through. So um, I got a little bit of seam sealer stuff coming. Uh, I was trying to get it here today, but I, I screwed up. Here, let me flip this camera around. All right, sorry about that. Uh, people interrupting and everything else. Um, it's hard because a lot of times when I'm filming, people just walk up to the door and they're beat on the window or beat on the door or whatever. But uh, I wanna thank, uh, like I said, thank all the people that are doing the subs and everything. And then uh, where I left off is I was going to say, I want to have you guys go over and check out our our small community of people and go check out their channels, you know. And one of them is uh, the crazy two uh, Canadians up in Canada. It's uh, Dave and Jeff, and that's at Sobering Restorations. They got a good channel. Go check them out. Um, go hit, a, hit, you know, the same thing. Hit subscribe on their channel and, and uh, tell Marco sent you. <clears throat> um, Michael Knight just recently started a channel 
and Michael Knight's channel is really good. He's got some uh, like Toolbox Tuesdays and Wayne Reynolds uh, Workbench Wednesdays, and he's got some uh, fabrication and stuff. Really cool channel. That's Michael Knight, and and then the other one is Ralphie's Customs, which is Ralphie Knucklehead on YouTube. Ralphie's Custom is one badass fabricator. The guy is amazing with the lathe, the milling machine uh, angles, and building motorcycle frames. And if you guys want to go to a channel that's very good channel, you'll learn from his channel. And uh, the other one is DG Retro Customs. I'm really excited because he just got a, a, a storage, uh, what do you call it there? He doesn't call it a shop. He calls it a, a oh man, whatever it is. He got a spot for a, a little garage so he could work on his uh, shop, uh, work on his uh, cars and stuff. And he's finally in, in his uh, unit. That's what he calls it. He's finally in his unit where he could uh, start working on his cars. And he does some amazing fabrication and he's got some really good skills. And he does some other videos that are, uh, you know, same thing where he does like tool, tool reviews and all that kind of good stuff. Go check him out, DG Retro Customs. Um, our other channel, and he's doing some amazing stuff right now, working on a 25 Studebaker, and that's NZ Mopar, Glenn Ridd, the noisy plick. Uh, NZ Mopar, Glenn Ridd on YouTube. Go check his channel out, and he's got some badass stuff on there that he's doing on his channel. You guys will love his channel, fabrication, and uh, doing that restoration on that 25, and he's got some more stuff coming up too. Um, recently I had a guy get a hold of me and he says, Hey, I want to send you a sticker and I'm going to try to, I got some stickers coming by the way. If, uh, Ben at tool addict is watching, I do have stickers coming. We're, we're having a hard time with our teespring right now. They're pissing me off. Um, but I do have some, uh, stickers coming for you, Ben. So I'll send you a bunch of those and, uh, maybe some other junk if I can find some stuff to send to you. <clears throat> Cause he's got everything. Ben's got a cool collection. But, uh, one of the other guys sent me, uh, on YouTube, sent me a sticker the other day. It's Andy's Doghouse. Um, Andy's Doghouse, he is, he's building this old Dodge truck, and you guys got to check his channel out. Hit, hit subscribe. He's a little, you know, little channel, but I'd like to build his channel up too because he's got some really good stuff on there. So he's got some nice, uh, this truck that he's building is going to be pretty, pretty sick when he's done with it. Um, Edge of Eternity, Bill Cameron, if you guys are into the spiritual stuff, uh, into Jesus and all that. And Hot Rods at the same time, that's a good channel to go check out. Really cool guy, fun to talk to, and just a heart of gold. Um, and he's been uh, commenting on my uh, YouTube for a while, and and uh, I didn't even know he had a channel, to be honest, because I don't go check everybody's channel, you know, when they sub or whatever. A lot of times, I don't even know that you're subbed to my channel. So um, uh, I was talking to Joey Collins at Mill Creek Fab Shop, and he says, "Hey, go check this guy's channel out." And I was like, "Oh, I know, I know who this dude is. He's always leaving nice comments on my channel." So um, Edge of Eternity, Bill Cameron, go check his channel out. And then uh, Lefty, which is Mill Creek Fab Shop, go check out Lefty's channel. He's a really cool guy, doing some amazing, uh, unbelievable work on uh, fabrication skills, and whatever, on bicycles and trikes and whatever. And he's got a cute little dog, JJ. Um, but go, you know, he's got some cool stuff coming up too. He's got a new shop that he's going to be moving into and stuff. And uh, he should be filming some of that stuff pretty soon too. So uh, Mill Creek Fab Shop, go check him out. And Another channel that I recently found, and I think he's up in Canada, and it's uh, Cameron Burns Garage, and it's um, it's it's spelled B-R-N-E-S, I believe. I think I'm spelling that wrong, but it's Cameron Burns Garage. Go check him out on YouTube, and I know people are going to say, hey, can you put the links down below, but right now, I don't know how to do that crap, and Heidi is too busy. We got so much crap going on, so if you guys could be patient with me, we have about 11 or 12 videos right now that are not even tagged or... Uh, um, they don't have the um, links or nothing down below right now, so please be patient with that. And uh, anyways, go check out Cameron Burns Garage in Canada. And it's um, he's doing uh, this really nice uh, uh, rat rod that, that he's building, and it's turning out pretty sick. And there's another one that is doing another badass uh, rat rod, and it's um, Hardcore Fab. If you guys haven't checked his channel out, you got to go look at it. He's got some really good stuff on his channel. And last but not least, um, I'm going to get the hell out of here, but uh, it's Chi Miko. I think it's how you say his channel. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go like this so you guys got it. But uh, he, it's, it's uh, Michael Knight's son, and he's, he started a YouTube channel, and he's trying to get some stuff going or whatever, and I want to support the, the kids too. You know, because a, a lot of these kids look up to the older adults and whatever, and they're doing some cool stuff on YouTube and fabrication and whatever. And his channel that he has right now 
is uh, mostly like sports highlights and stuff. So if you guys are into sports and football and you know all that kind of stuff, go over and check his channel out. Or if you're into video games, um, he's got some cool stuff on there. And he, he's working on editing uh, the videos and whatever. Uh, he's doing a good job. And that's uh, Chi Chi. I, I'm not even know how to say his his channel name. You know, Chi Miko. <clears throat> But anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I know I rambled on for a little bit there. Um, I wanted to throw this in today on this video. And also, if you watch this video tonight, I believe is when uh, Mill Creek Fab Shop is doing that giveaway. So please stop over uh, to Lefty's channel and watch that giveaway and support him. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. It's been a long day. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for all the support. And please hit the subscribe button. Later. Who is Wayne Reynolds?